I've included the image of the Unreal Framework complete with text this time. <laughs> At an old version before, sorry about that. But the onto the uh, game mode, we the game mode is one of the most important classes in the Unreal Engine framework. It handles all connections to the game. So you hear it call called the source for rules of the game. So it's it it's all the rules that the game needs. So it it controls how many people or how many players can connect or spectators that can connect. It, it controls how players enter the game. So it handles all the process for assigning them the class of the player controller and getting a player actually physically in the game. And it handles other rules for the game, like how much points are awarded for some particular action in the game, um, how much points are needed to win or lose or end the game. It controls the start and end of the game. The other thing it does is it defines all the classes that are used within the game, it defines what the default pawn is that the player will possess, it defines the HUD class, the player controller class, the spectator class, the game state class, the player state class. It where you define everything for this particular game mode. And you can only have one game mode per session. However, you can have multiple game modes and change them based on the you know the map or the session that you load up. But one of the main things to keep in mind about the game mode is it only exists on the server. So clients will have access to a game mode, but it will be their game mode before they join this the hosted session and it's gonna have it's gonna be useless. So whenever you need to access the anything on the game mode, it needs to be done from the server that means you know you, you probably have to do some sort of remote pr procedure call or something like that to get to the server uh, another important feature that the game mode has is something called the option string so this is a string variable where we can save data that exists across the uh, hosting of a session so we can we can save data into this option string and it will and then we retrieve it when the game mode restarts the next or hosting the game so you're going to have a game mode that's open at the when you're in the hosting menu when you click host or launch the game to host the game you can then save data for that session into the hosting so settings and stuff like that if we go into the editor now and, and you look and we, we'll just have a look at the game mode search for game mode you can see there's two game mode classes here so you've got a game mode base and you've got a game mode the game mode base is the one that you're going to use most of the time it has a lot of important classes that you're going to override. The, the two first ones here, straight off the bat, is a nick game and a nick game state. It, so nick game is when the game starts. It's got information written in here. It's well worth scrolling through this and having a read. And a nick game state is you're going to know that your game state's ready there. So you can start setting things on your game state if you need to, or passing data to the game state that you need to replicate to clients. Uh, the other game mode, so the, just the standard game mode, is what was in Unreal originally. And Unreal originally was designed more for, you know, first-person shooters and the, the actual game, Unreal. So the they've got this uh, match state sort of addition that just adds sort of a match state thing to the, to the game mode. It's not really applicable to most games. Even, you know, like a first person game unless you're just going to host a game jump in and start shooting it's kind of not enough to to use so generally you'll find yourself using the match state base you can just inherit from this and not use the match state but it's just a waste right you might as well just inherit from the game mode base so you can see here the default classes that i mentioned that's they all get assigned and you, you can assign these in c plus plus but you'll probably recall from there i'll just switch to the editor here and you go to world settings so window world settings you can see just in the uh yeah, game mode so you can override with the game mode but these are the this is what you'll find in any game mode you grab one, grab one later but that's where you would sign all the classes in the game mode. that's default pawn you're gonna... so the the game mode is responsible for creating the game state and then the game state then replicates itself and we'll color the game state soon so down here is where it begins to handle the login of the player that's coming into the session. So you've got login and post login, and that's where you can do things to the incoming player, add them to lists, or do whatever you do. And like all of these are overridable. So when we create our own game, change these, and we'll be using a lot of these. Like the player can restart and restart player. We'll be overriding a lot of these to uh, get the the loading sequence that we want to use. So let's 
close these off and we'll start with creating a, a game mode. So we're going to come to core. I'm actually going to close source off for a sec so I don't get confused. And I'm going to create the game mode in managers as well. So I'm just going to come in here, add Unreal class. I'm going to put this as RTS core game mode. I'll look for game mode here. Game mode base is the one we want. Good. Again, I'm just going to create the object initializer. So I'm going to. I mean the. I'm not going to forget the public list. I go to my game instance and copy this. Now in here, I almost guarantee we're probably going to use both of these, so we'll, we'll put them in now, but you can just, if you type in virtual void and then uh, init, so we've got init game, game, there it is. So you can see there's quite a few parameters there, we're not going to worry about those yet. So that's that's an override of the init game in, in the base class, and the other one was... Uh, So another one that we can uh, we can use, and this is you can use this to get a list of any connecting players called uh, generic player initialization. In uh, we override that. Let's just create a protected section here, and let's create a property for our or a variable for our connected players. So we'll just make it a a generic player controller and change it later to. A certain like to our own player controller if we want, but the generic one will do. So we'll just uh, we'll call that our session players. Oh, one two misses, and then in here we'll And then in here, we'll just check that the incoming player is valid. So if I'm going to change that from C, let's go new player. So if uh, the new player is valid, we want to cast it to a player controller. So at the moment, it's just a controller. We want to cast it to a player controller. So a player controller. Equals one, and then if if that cast is successful, then our session players we just want to add him. Uh, I think I forgot to put the asterisks on the. So now we have so as each player, this generic. Let's let's have a look here. Right, go here. here. Go to the actual class. This generic player initialization handles all player initialization that is shared between the travel methods. So, however they connect, this will be fired. It's called from both post login and handle seamless travel player. So, this will fire when any player connects at any point. And um, one thing we might change actually is add unique in case they're already in there somehow. So we're not, we only want to add a player once. And then we can use these session players later to uh, assign the, like, initialize the players in the world, give them a pawn to possess and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and what we might do is, on a nick game, we'll just empty that. That's a fresh list every, when we uh, start a new game. That'll do for the game mode for now. But we'll, uh, we'll 
come back to this once we have our game state and probably player controller created. But what we will do is we will create the game mode for the project. So same as before, manager, Unreal class, this uh, an RF game mode down to the game mode base. And I'm just going to grab the constructor out of here and the public. And we don't need to do anything else in this for now, but that's fine how it is. Uh, I will, on this, the core game mode, I'll make it abstract. And, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. <laughs> This is not from the game mode boast, this is from our uh, all game mode. So, me pressing tab then in right, it automatically adds the include, so it's included the uh, framework. Just the, worth highlighting because that's how you reference to a plugin. It's just straight up to the directory. You don't have to put anything in front. So long as you've got that build.cs entry, it's, it knows about RTS core and it just treats it like it's another folder in the in the project. So let's go into the editor now and uh, we'll sort out our, we'll create a blueprint class and we'll assign it and uh, I'll look at what that, what that looks like. So in the project now, I'm going to come to my core content directory, create a folder, framework, so I'm keeping the same naming convention as I am with the C++ framework, managers, new folder. And then in here, we're going to create a blueprint class. Would be and game mode class. I'm going to call it the game mode. Uh, the way we're, I'm going to be setting up the framework is there's really only going to be one game mode, and we're going to use data to drive game modes <laughs> of different game types or whatever, so that we we'll only have one game. Uh, and now, if we come into here. And see, this is where we can assign all our classes. So we don't really have anything to assign yet. This is where we'll come and we'll set the default classes for everything. So we'll just save that and then we'll come into our project settings, go to maps and modes, and assign our B game mode to here. Uh, there's also an advanced global default game mode. I'm not actually entirely sure it comes up, but there's when you hover. Okay, if it's not specified on dedicated servers or something else. So that's that. That's the uh, the game mode done. We'll definitely be back to the game mode. Got a, a fair bit more adding the game data loading and all that there. But we sort of need the game state to do all that properly because the game state is what's going to communicate everything to players. So. And that's what we'll be covering next in part four. We'll cover the game state. I'll see you there.